Hi, come with me if you want to live, hunty. Andrew, and this, obviously, is Giddy's Toys. I really didn't want to talk about this one. This one stings. Real bad. We need to talk about Sarah. And that being Sarah Connor from Terminator 2, Kenner's 1991 line, as well as the 1991 film of the same name. As you can imagine, Terminator 2 is the sequel to Terminator 1, which was a breakout sci-fi movie uh, by James Cameron. So, uh, you know, toy companies were ill-prepared for it. Uh, and this was a time when Kenner was, I would say, sort of the, you know, doing the unholy trilogy of the late 80s, early 90s. Whereas, you know, we had the He-Mans, the Transformers, the G.I. Joes from the early 80s. Kenner took Robocop, Terminator, and Aliens and said, here's some R-rated bloody, gory things kids would never watch, and let's do this trinity of just, you know, <laughs> movies and toys like for that, and it's it's a weird choice. It's, you know, there's many videos out there on this phenomenon, and this is uh, another one. Kenner's Terminator 2 toy line was pretty great, actually. It's, it started off, you know, modest enough. They had sort of, you know, every conceivable look of you know, the superstar Arnold Schwarzenegger at the time in, you know, the toy line. They had the T-1000 cop who looked much more like he belonged in the police academy toy line, but he was there. Uh, eventually they got around to John Carter with his little motorcycle. I mean, it was like the world was fleshed out enough. Um, and they sort of took a sideways turn. This is not unlike, you know, Aliens or Robocop before it. Terminator went real weird though. Back to the topic of our MIA 80s ladies, it's Sarah, however, was left out. And it's it's a little surprising for a number of reasons. Uh, for one, Aliens, you know, just by default, was a very, you know, feminine action movie, we'll say. Uh, Ripley, of course, was a star. You had your Alien Queen. Vasquez, they never made a nude figure, but, you know, like... Big feminine energy coming out of Aliens. Likewise, Robocop, not so much, but they, they didn't shy away from doing a female character eventually. Terminator, and I'm, I'm coming from this from a, you know, a feeling standpoint, but even back in the day, living through this, it was a hyper masculine toy line and movie franchise and arcade game and you name it. So if there was even like a whiff of a boob, the whole thing just could have came so like tumbling down. This is especially, I'm going to say heartbreaking though, in a sense, because Sarah Connor was, and is, the female action star. I mean, a, a, a rare joy of mine throughout the 90s was to bring my, you know, gal pals to movies. I'd bring them to, you know, if Aliens was uh, playing at a local theater, if Star Wars was re-released, that kind of thing. I would sort of say, you know, like, here's some great options for you <laughs> in terms of like, you know, kick-ass action heroines. I mean, they, they really reveled at Princess Leia breaking them out of this, you know, prison cell. They, they loved Ripley. And of course, when Sarah Connor came on screen, just, you know, this, she was a mall rat who liked chili fries, who went on to become this, like, soldier of fortune. You know, all my friends would just come back from the movie and just start practicing that, like, one-arm, you know, shot off saw gun reload. It was just, it was just incredible to watch, to see them just light up over having, you know, an Arnie or a Jean-Claude of their own in Linda Hamilton. And that's the real tragedy of it all, is that you actually had a really incredible character in Sarah Connor. Muscles McGee, kick-ass chick. You know, her feminine energy wasn't going to interfere with the rest of the toy line. So, I mean, of all franchises, especially around this time, and especially coming from Kenner, who was not a stranger to making women, very odd choice, very odd, you know, character to not make, essentially, you know, someone who actually would be, you know, she would stand up to any old the G.I. Joe ladies anytime. The fact of the matter is, however, we don't know why she wasn't made. You know, no one that I've ever encountered who worked on the line, no interviews, I've not seen anything ever uh, explaining definitively why it wasn't. So, I mean, really, you know, the, the general assumption on this channel is often classic sexism. The other thing and I find very interesting with, you know, Terminator um, and a little bit, you know, Aliens and Robocop as well, is that it didn't take long for Kenner to realize that the kids buying these toys were never going to check their homework. Like, unless they had negligent parents, um, they were never going to watch the movie. So, I mean, the commercials could kind of give them a very broad, 
generalization of what the plot is without getting to, into too many details, but they could sort of start to include new characters. And in the Terminator 2, let's say, spin-off, they did exactly that. They had villains like, you know, Chromium, who was this horned robot devil. They had this mutant cyborg called Cybergrip or something. They had, you know, Arnie had this just bizarre coupe, this car that was armored. Like, nothing made sense. Nothing mattered. And that's the thing. If, if the kids didn't know about Sarah Connor, they weren't going to find out until they were much older. So this final verdict is good news. Uh, it took a while to get there, but it is good news. It was probably around early 2000s, maybe 2002, when McFarlane Put Toys put out a movie maniac Sarah Connor. This would sort of be her first Terminator 2 likeness, where she had, you know, the cap, many different hair options, which was a strange thing to fixate on, but, you know, she was made. And it was, you know, about 10 years too late, but she got there. The next figure for Sarah Connor wouldn't come for another, like, 15 years, really. It was, wasn't until, you know, Super 7's reaction line that came out, where they introduced first Terminator 1 Sarah Connor, where she was sort of, you know, just the, the mousy, average, every woman. Uh, later, of course, they would do Terminator 2, which is, you know, where the real money's at. The main attraction was just in 2020, when NECA released Sarah Connor finally in their Terminator 2 line. Um, she likewise had quite a few different hair sculpts, different looks, she had glasses, a cap, a lot of guns, a lot of guns. Just a great figure all around, and really sort of, you know, the pinnacle of what we wanted all these years. It's also worth mentioning, just for mentioning it, that NECA did do another Sarah Connor figure for one of the other movies that I don't acknowledge. The figure's nice, that's all I gotta say about it. All that said, y'all know me, I love a retro release, and I, I still do wish there was, you know, a Sarah Connor figure that would fit in with the vintage line. Um, I, I don't know, I, I've never seen any customizers do this. I've never seen any photographers attempt this. I've never seen figures that could be slotted in or, you know, adapted to do that. And that might be, you know, uh, it might say something about Sarah, but it also says something about the line itself. Terminator 2 you know, Kenner's line, I don't see it very often out there in the ether. It's not really something I see in toy photography, it's not something I see in customizer channels. It's too bad, because I mean, the thing is, if someone did make Sarah Connor, I'd go back and buy the whole damn thing, but currently it's not blowing up, you know, people's collections. Uh, that said, as nostalgia shifts and people start to look towards the 90s, um, you know, as they have been lately with X-Men, thanks to X-Men 97, you might see a resurgence and, you know, in that case, perhaps Hasbro would like to revisit. <laughs> and with that, the unknown future rolls on. Thank you for watching, thanks for uh, commenting, liking, subscribing, all the YouTube things, and I will see you next time on MIA 80s Lives.